the Bible that says that the evidence for God's existence is in the things that he has made. And I confirm that in my studies as a scientist. Scientists would do well to take the Bibles seriously. I'm persuaded that it's an accurate account of Earth history. In the beginning, according to the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth. But modern science claims that the Earth was shaped over billions of years by natural processes without any divine intervention. A belief in long ages of gradual change is the basis of modern geology. But just how old is the Earth? I'm not sure. I have no idea. I'd say around a billion, two billion years. I don't know how old the Earth is. Uh, Ten billion? <laughs> billion years? No, a million. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> now I believe it's six to ten thousand years old. I'm a creationist, and I think it's probably about six to eight thousand years old. I know that seems absurd to a lot of people. Ten billion, a million, or six thousand years old. Most geologists agree that the Earth is about four and a half billion years old. So why do creationists disagree? Creation scientists have come together to study the evidence for creation and a young Earth. With specializations ranging from geology and physics to paleontology and cosmology. And their research is challenging the conventional belief in an old Earth and long ages of slow gradual change. The fundamental assumptions which underlie the theory of evolution. One of the group is Dr. Andrew Snelling with the Creation Science Foundation in Brisbane, Australia and Answers in Genesis in Kentucky. The Bible doesn't give a specific age number for the age of the earth. There's no verse that you can point to that gives you the, the direct age. But the Bible does have a chronological framework. First of all for the history of man because it gives the ages of the people that lived and died and you can use those to back calculate to a, an age for man of about oh, six, seven thousand years. And so there is some specific references in the Bible which allows you to be fairly firm in uh, accepting a young age for the earth of only thousands of years. Glaciers, volcanoes and floods acted like sculptors' tools to shape the peaks and valleys of the Rocky Mountains. That was about a hundred million years ago, according to conventional theories. Well, according to plate tectonics, you've got two plates right there. One is they're pushing up against each other. That material is being pushed under, like this. It becomes hotter and it eventually melts. And that molten material gets pushed underneath this, this plate here, this crust, and it gets to about where we are, to here in the, in the, in the Rockies, where... Merlin Sagan, formerly a consultant geologist, now explores the mountains in a hot air balloon, where he explains the geology of the Rockies. ...and for the uplifting of these mountains. And it's a very dramatic thing. Geologists believe the Rockies were formed when the North American continent gradually pulled away from Europe, disturbing the semi-molten layer beneath the crust and thrusting up the mountain range that now forms the backbone of the North American continent. But conventional models of gradual continental drift are being challenged by a geophysicist at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Working on a Cray supercomputer, Dr. John Baumgardner has developed a new model of catastrophic plate tectonics based on a biblical perspective of early Earth history. In contrast to the account that the Earth is hundreds of millions of years old, this explanation argues for an Earth that's, that's much younger, on the order of a few thousand years old. 
scientists would do well to take the Bible seriously, to to seriously uh, consider its its testimony to the history of the Earth. I'm persuaded that it's an accurate account of Earth history. The Bible suggests that in the beginning there was just one supercontinent, which geologists now recognize as Pangaea. You can close up the Atlantic Ocean, putting the pieces back together, and they fit almost perfectly like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. There was a time in Earth history when all the present continents were together in, in a su single large supercontinent. And the computer simulations that I have done demonstrate this, that uh, we can start with a, super, a single supercontinent, uh, incipient subduction around the, the margin of the supercontinent, and that that, that subduction uh, has a the natural consequence is the pulling apart of this supercontinent. Most scientists believe that the Earth's surface, the crust, consists of plates that are moving relative to one another. They can collide and push up and form mountains, they can split apart, or they can, uh, one can be forced under the other, which is called subduction. And most scientists have thought that this process is very slow. But the interesting thing is there's more and more evidence to indicate that the only way you can get these processes operating is very rapidly. And uh, Dr. John Baumgartner at Los Alamos National Laboratory has actually modeled in a computer how uh, this concept of thermal runaway subduction works. The biblical account of the flood of Noah is a scenario where there is massive tectonic upheaval, large-scale structural changes in the Earth, continents moving apart by several feet per second. What happens is that uh, once the material, the ocean uh, crust, is, it actually ocean floor starts to push down into the mantle, the friction generates heat which overcomes the friction and so it just speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. A very rapid break up of the supercontinent, you have fragments going in different directions. Parts sinking with this thermal runaway process and the rest of it jostling around, splitting apart in a catastrophic manner. How is it that deep layers of water-laid sedimentary rock cover the high mountain ranges? Dr. Baumgardner claims that shattering of the supercontinent caused a global flood. Runaway thermal subduction brought a rise in sea level, and as the ocean floor cracked, tremendous heat converted volumes of seawater to pressurized steam. Steam will condense and form intense rain, and it's very easy to get rainfall rates of three feet an hour all over the Earth. So one consequence of this would be intense global rain. In addition to that, if this ocean floor is carrying on top of it a layer of sediment in conveyor belt fashion to the edge of the continent where it's getting scraped off and we have a big wedge of sediment being deposited at the continent edge. There is several thousand feet of sediment deposited over a good fraction of the continental surface. Uh, all of the world's ocean floor disappearing into the, into the Earth's interior and new ocean floor formed. The creationist model shows that as the supercontinent was ripped apart by runaway thermal subduction, the Earth's plates crashed against each other, buckling the crust and forming high mountain ranges. You'll have fragments of the original supercontinent that will collide with one another.